Armadillidian Gramulatum. This was one of my first colonies and it has grown in numbers dramatically. Take back some of these and take a look. I do notice that some of them are starting to get a white skirt around them, which is different. So I might try isolating the skirted varieties. It's just something new to do. I don't think I really have a bunch of high yellow, but this one has been going for a while since February of this year. This is July. We have some definite growth. We have tiny babies all the way up to big adults. But as you can tell, this one is a booming colony of Armadillidium granulatum. Armadillidium nasata peach. It's probably my first producing colony. You see them? There are, mm, I don't know if thousand is a word, but I could believe it. A thousand of these little babies. Now this variety does get some color variants from light to dark. I've even seen a gray type somewhere in here, but as you can tell, they have taken off and claimed this as their own. I never really have this full of food. They seem to always peel back whenever I put in there. I think they've probably got enough for now, so I'll leave it. And as I mentioned, maybe a darker coloration. The Clown Isopod. Armadillidium klugi montenegro. And we do have some individuals, I'm happy to say, have all orange, or sorry, all yellow. Which, I think it's just supposed to have one down the middle and then white on the sides, but as you will see, the majority of these are white. They kind of look like Armadillidium Dubrovnik. See any real tiny babies, but you have pieces of food that do like to sprout at times. That's a potato. I might find some peas that are starting to grow. And ooh, some 
babies. Armadillidium maculatum dalmatian. Now what's unique is there are some lighter forms in here. So they're like Armadillidium maculatum, but higher white. I don't know if a lot of them are more high white than Dalmatian, but let's check and see what we have going on underneath here. So they're starting to take off. And these are one of my original kind of colonies. Hmm. try to separate two of these lighter ones to see if I can get something that's very translucent. And I like to put a lot of this really decaying wood. This stuff is just, you can squish it. It's so soft. Armadillidium vulgare, orange sunset. Now we have here a bunch of different kinds of orange morph colorations. There's even some grays that are still in this unproven color. Try and get a larger selection of them. Yeah, they just seem to be different colors of orange jelly beans. A few adults getting to be large and dark. Springtails. And yeah, there are some wild types in this one. It's not as pure red as you would say an orange sunset, so maybe we'll have to pull a few wild types. Or I'll leave it with its mother. <laughs> Armadillidium vulgare, and this one has been named Dakota. That's where they were wild caught. We're just gonna try and let this one breed out and see what kind of genetics it will have. I don't know if they've yet reproduced. This is kind of a new culture, but we'll be able to find out. Several tunnels they've dug. I don't want to go disturbing them though. I we'll have to watch this for any future mankai that may show up. Let's check right under here. Nothing yet. I'll we'll have to come back.
this has been a display tank, kind of a pet project for Armentulidium vulgare magic potion. see how they've become. Oh, that's not good. But, well, there may be one dead. There are many babies. Let's see, this one did get a weird fungus that grew on everything. The springtails really like it. Saving the best for last, Armentalidium gastroi. These are tanks. Let's try and lift some of this leaf litter. I gotta look at all the little ones. Some have developed a white skirt. Cubara species, and they seem to be all there. They like to hang out on this piece of old coral. Yes, they were. Let's see. Yeah. Explosion of babies, but there has been around of juveniles. 
that I've grown up. I think I just have the six original and two babies. I like to hang around in their own place. We will see if they take off. Cubaris Marina Papaya. Now, these are just a white out version of Cubaris Marina. They do have some more black ant springtails mixed in. Cubaris rubber ducky. Now, this one is still a new colony. So, they are a little bit harder to find. And I believe that they are under this piece of wood. Cubaris Pak Chong. They seem to be doing pretty well. Little monkey all over. Let me try and flip this one. Need more springtails. Cicellus Mardi Gras. I've had some success in uh, an offspring, but they don't seem to be ter determined to reproduce at a quick rate. They seem to lose some. Miska 
Lance Ocellus, high yellow. Now there have been a few armadillidium that have made it in here that are also high yellow. I'm trying to prove out all the Aniscus Ocellus. Some of these are brownish, but everybody has a lot of yellow spots. One trait that either is determined determined by genetics or a common misshedding is to have this back spine be all yellow. I had a parent that had this exact same coloring and I was hoping it would pass that along. It seems it has. This might be the parent. Oniscus ocellus, wild types. Now, this is one big culture of just all the extra Niscus ocellus that I've had. And they do go very fast. Orcelio bolivari. Now, these I think look like trilobites. These were one of the reasons I wanted to get into the hobby. And they have reproduced. 
There seems to be a few tiny monkai in this corner. Let's see if I can find one. There it goes. isopod has a pattern along its back that kind of seems like a shimmer. They have yet to reproduce, but they're still growing. isopod name and it seems we've lost one now these only seem to have a few surviving adults I'm going to need at least a male to help reproduce this colony I think it had four females and their numbers are dwindling. This form of Hasi does seem to get in a lighter pattern of coloration than on the yellow. Zegai are probably the biggest morph that you can find. And I've had a bunch of large males 
living under this rock, but I guess they're just babies now. Let's see where my big males have moved to. I'm guessing under this one. Guess again. Pods. They take a long time to reproduce. They were one of the last colonies to do so. But I'm glad to say they have some young babies. However, they do get territorial, so you want to make sure that there are plenty of hide spots for them. Porcelio, Dubuscri, Trochophilia. It's hard to pronounce, but they do have some really good coloration. And it seems to be sexually dimorphic with the females having a gray skirt variety and the males having a dark orange skirt with yellow spots. Let's check for... These big males. It seems this one has the coloration. Oh, there's a couple. As you can tell, it has an orange skirt. to as brickwork high spots. producing colonies. They always seem to eat their food. I don't see any calcium left over. But they like to burrow. And they seem to have a brownish variety to grays in my culture. Thank you. 
Persilio ornatus, high yellow. And this particular group has been giving me a surprise. A new patterning has emerged, and we'll see if I can find any. Some have a low pattern, while some have a high yellow. And I've been pulling the reduced patterning ones. Some are very light coloration, almost a ghost white to them. But a highly variable morph. Where we have some high yellow individuals, and then even low patterned individuals. led to some pretty unique morphs, like the chocolate, or one of my newest varieties. Porcilio ornatus high yellow chocolate. These individuals are a little bit lighter brown than their ornatus cousins. They haven't taken off as much as I'd like. But they still are very high yellow. These three individuals are Porcelio ornatus whiteout, or I would like to call them ice. Now they've come from Porcelio ornatus high yellow, but they have no pigmentation as you can tell. They do have black eyes. They are not completely red-eyed, but we will have to see if I've got a male and a female. There seems to be only two present at a time, but I know I've put three in here, and we will see if there's going to be more produced that I can put into this tub and isolate. This will be a new morph whenever they do take off again. I'll be happy to see how this turns out. Porcelio Valencia. They are a little bit like Hoffman Zegai, but they can be a little bit lighter patterned. I believe I have some more yellow or orange individuals in here. But I think they're close to a Savelli in size. Porcelio Sevilli, caramel, caramel. And this morph would be similar to regular Sevilli, although these individuals are brownish. And I saw people were calling them caramel. They're almost like a step down from a Hoffman's egg eye size. There you go. And they have 
have yet to reproduce, but we'll see if they can pass along that caramel coloring to have normal civili, which are just kind of a normal gray. But it seems I have to wait to find more. As you can tell, this one's a male and this one's a female. And I think that plays out as well with male and female. And here's another lady too. Porcilio Scaber. This is a wild type colony that I found in the wild. And I did put in one orange just to see if those would produce any other recessive genetics. It seems for the most part we just have gray wild types. But a few browns that show up along with some skirted individuals. Now this main stock has produced several different color types, which I will show you. There's another R, all orange that I've added in just to see if there's any other recessive genetics in these wilds. Lottery types, which can give you anything from wild types, albinos, orange Dalmatians, Dalmatians, piebald, and this one it just seems to be the most fun. If you're looking for any random genetics. This is your type. This looks like a brown piebald. This colony was one of my first to start reproducing, so maybe why it's so active. But this container has seen many shapes. They seem to chew down the wood. Porcilio Scaber, Orange Koi, 
This has got to be one of my biggest colonies. This would be their overflow, or let's say low patterns. And this is what I'm trying to prove out as a high pattern. They seem to have some coloration, but it doesn't stay in the younger. Let's check under this. tell the young don't seem to maintain their strong patterning with some of the adults I've tried to isolate but it doesn't mean there's not some of them that seem to be very very highly patterned highly variable and it seems that my work was for naught because a lot of them still are showing up with high patterns inside of the big bin. Let's take a look. As soon as one gray type has shown up. Actually, I think I let go two regular gray civili. We'll see what they do in here if they ever find each other. wild types but what I call silver dragons. They have skirts and I have put in a lava or two hoping I can get this wild type to mix with lava. Now why I would call them dragons is at the base of their antennas is orange with black tips. And I do have what I would call a red dragon or more of a brown variety. I'm gonna let this project go and see if I can get some kind of lava cross with my wild types. Orcilio Scaper wild type, which I have called these red dragons, which I'm hoping to get more of a brownish orange body, as well as that brown skirt, which the original individuals had. Let's see if we can find any more brown colored. But it seems we just have a wild type mix. seem to be skirted, while some of them retaining a light color, a light coloration. I think one of those seems to have still kept its red skirt. eventually delineates and hopefully 
we can get more brownish skirted individuals to grow. to isolate a yellow calico. You maybe see a lot of light colored individuals in here, which I'm hoping will eventually prove out to be a new form of yellow calico or similar to Orion's calico. With a lot of these individuals, be showing a yellow calico trait and a bunch of wild types still showing up. And let's see if I can find one of the big parents that may have started this yellow calico to show how it really does break up. in here, save for a few wild types, and pick up this one. There's a few lighter colored individuals who we would call yellow calico. We'll have to see how it grows out. Porcelio Scaber, and these ones were labeled CA Skirts, which they just seem to be a skirted variety. They've already reproduced, so we'll have to see how I can take this skirted wild type and try to change it into more. But I do see some monkai. We'll hopefully see how these babies grow up. Porcelio Scaper, Bryceville. I think these are from Bryceville Canyon. And they seem to have done well with springtails. Let's take a look for any individuals. This one will just be some difference in genetics. Hopefully, yes, it does seem like it's reproduced some. We'll have to see what the next generation brings. see a monkai among them. Nothing special, but their genetics could become crucial one day. Porcelio scaber, wild type, and I have been told this one is called Gene Machine. I think it's because it has a variety of different types, maybe even one of the original lineages that lava came out of. Or maybe this is just a mix of a bunch of extra genetics, but... It seems I will get some kind of cool patterns out of these. We'll let them do what they want and see where they take off with the gene machines. Porcelio Scaber Orange Dalmatian. These are very high whites. Forgive the growing pea. They have already 
you've taken off, there's a lot of these individuals to start with. I'm hoping to just get more of a white out. But they have a little bit of yellow or orange. They've already dropped a few babies. That one's all white. So we will have some pure white out genetics to crossbreed with. And we'll see what I can make out of these. Mix them with some others. But you have to just have some genetic recessives in there. Porcelio Scaber Scorpio. Now these were given to me as a yellow calico morph. Let's try and find a few individuals. This one is already a proven out yellow calico. Have to see when they grow up and try to cross them with one of mine. All the different colors of Scaber. Porcelio Scaber Lava. Now these are normal lava. They, oh, those are normal lava. Some of these individuals have a high orange patterning and a black tail, which has been selectively bred for. And I'm hoping that they have started to reproduce. It seems the springtails have. Yes, there are some monkai among them. Let's see if we can get a closer up of these individuals. So they have dropped a brood. We'll just have to see if they have a lot of their high orange genetics on their tail. Yes, there are a lot of monkai. And it seems we have disturbed one large mom who has that strong orange genetics. Thank you.